office complexes, maybe warehouses. When we get into apartment complexes, we use a second different type of income or a second different type of calculator. And there are two versions of that. There is one called a gross rent multiplier, the GRM, gross rent multiplier. The other version of that is called a gross income multiplier. And they are different. I hope you see how they are different. I told you that some properties have more income than just rent. If you had a double, and let's say the only thing that you earned on that double was the rental income, you would use a gross income multiplier because I'm, I misspoke. I'm sorry. I just misspoke. You would use a gross rent multiplier because that's the only thing that is being generated. Please forgive me and make sure you understand. A double or a four unit, typically four units or less, would only have rent as the only income it generates. So they would use a GRM. If your apartment complex, and that is when you use these, is mainly in that residential world. Let's say you've got a 40 unit now, and there are other incomes that are collected. Back to here. Here. Maybe there are other types of income you would use. This would be the gross income multiplier. And they do that because they want to make sure that the valuation captures all of the income, not just the rent. So these are the same concept. They just use different sources, GRM versus the GIM. And literally, I cannot explain this number to you because I don't use them. All I can tell you is the bigger the number, the better that apartment complex is. And literally the math is very simple. It is exactly what it says it is. So let's look at an example that I wanna make up. Let's say you've got a four unit apartment complex and each apartment pays $500 a month. That's $2,000 but it's 12 months. So that's $24,000 of gross rent. Now remember, it's gross rent. So in this particular example, there's no need to calculate vacancy or credit loss. There's no need to calculate expenses because the gross income or the gross rent, that's the one we're doing here, literally uses gross numbers. And it, in this example, we're going to use a gross rent multiplier of 10. You cannot know this, so it will be given to you. Once again, it's given to you. The appraiser would know it because he's been doing this a long time. So in this example, you literally take the gross income, uh, well, in this case, it's just rent. It's still the all the income, it's just only rent though. But you would multiply it by that 10 and understand that the value of this four unit apartment complex is $240,000 because the only income they calculated or the only income they earned was rent. So we use the GRM. But if we change this story a little bit, let's say we had more income. We've got six units 
times 500. That's $3,000 a month times 12 months is $36,000 in rent. But wait, there's more. This property also made $1,000 in laundry quarters and it made another 2000 in parking pass fees or whatever fees the equation or the question adds up. So really, now we see that it made $39,000 in total income. It made rental income. It made, you know, parking pass. It made laundry, whatever it is. And the gross income multiplier in this example is 10. And I use that. Let's use another number so it doesn't confuse you. Let's just say it's 15. Where did that come from? You don't know. The question will give it to you. Okay. And you literally now do exactly the same thing. Well, the gross income is 39,000. The gross income multiplier that we are using is 15. So we would take this times 15 and realize, pull out our handy dandy calculator and go, Hey Siri, What's 39,000 times 15 is $585,000 is the value of that six unit because it generates other income. So we use this one and this one, it only generated rent. So we use the gross rental income or the gross rental multiplier, the GRM. These are typically used inside of residential, where the cap rate is used in the other. So here's the gross income multiplier. There's the gross rental. And like I said, it's based on the one to four units. Now, sometimes and this book says this, I don't see this in the real world that they use the monthly rent as opposed to the annual rent. I'm going to tell you this is a heated debate amongst appraisers and I apologize in advance because I have talked to appraisers in Oregon who said, no dude, we do it annually. So this is the one disparity that I do see, whereas some of them use monthly. The gross income is typically used for five units or more. Now, I want to warn you and caution you. That is not a be all end all. I'm going to tell you that whenever you have more income generated than just the rent, you should use the gross income multiplier. What they're saying here is that typically doubles don't have other income. Well, it could maybe true. Maybe a double has a laundry in the basement that they share and the guy adds to that. So don't think that it's a dead solid rock answer that one to four always uses this. I'm going to tell you in your wisdom and knowledge, you should look and see are they getting just rent income or are they getting different income like late fees, parking passes, pool, rental, all that kind of stuff. That's going to tell you which one you should use. It's just that most commonly there's no other income but rent in a one to four. All right. <clears throat> They're the gross income. Once again, they're saying it's annual, but we talked about that. So understand that sometimes they do it monthly. Sometimes they do it annually. And I think they would do it monthly so that you don't get a huge number on your gross rent multiplier. You know, they don't want to tell you it's 120. So they may tell you, well, it's 10 
per month, which would be times 12 months, 120. They just don't want to show you 120. So what happens is this appraiser now has done or now can do three different valuations, right? They did the one where the sales comparison approach, and let's say he got $100,000 using the comps. He's actually going to do all three of them. And then for the uh, uh, cost approach, he got $95,000 with the new build. And then he said, well, if we rent it out, let's do the income approach and we get 120 based on the income it could make if it was a rental property. So he's actually going to do all three. And if you look in your book, there is probably an example of the 1004 or the 1006, which is the form number for that uniform residential appraisal report. We mentioned that a couple hours ago now, uh, but that's the form the appraiser is going to do. If you look at that form, there are places in that form for him to do all three of these. Well, I told you that he's got to come up with one value and currently he's got three. So what he has to do is this thing called a reconciliation. A reconciliation is where he is going to use the total of these three numbers and he is going to weight them. He is going to uh, normalize them based upon the probability of each one of these three things happening. Now, on the exam, you are not going to actually have to do this math, but I want to show you how this works. So let's say he's done these three things on a house that I'm going to sell. Let's say it's my house that I just told you. I live in Brown County in Indiana. I live back in the woods, highly uh, secluded, and he's going to do my property. So he, through the sales comparison, he got 100000 He got 95 for a new build, and he got 120 if I rented my house out to a tenant. Well, what are the odds that I'm going to rent this property out? Let's say the odds are 10%. What are the odds that it's going to be a new build property? Well, I'm going to tell you there are no land around here. I own it all. So there is going to be no new build. What are the odds of having to do the cost approach? Well, we're going to say that's zero. And therefore, what are the odds that I would sell my house to another individual under the sales comparison approach? Well, I would hope you see that it's 90%, right? Because it has to equal 100%. This right here is the reconciliation part. This is the normalization. This is the weighting factor. This is the probability. And then what he's literally going to do is go, okay, well, 90% of 100 grand is $90,000. 0% of 95 is, uh, hopefully we can do that math, 0. And 10% of the 120,000 is $12,000. Voila, there's my value. There's my value. And he did that. Let me add those in there to make sure we get. He did that 
through this reconciliation process by determining the probability of each one of these, adding them up and getting this number. And this is the number that my house would appraise for on his form after he does the reconciliation. And that, my friends, is how the appraisal process works. So that is how the appraisal process works. He literally will do all three of those and then simply reconcile the three numbers. Now, let me give you a little insight. If the appraiser knows in advance it's a purchase of a residential property like we are involved in, Typically, what they will say is, well, what are the odds it's going to be rented out? Well, none, because the borrower is borrowing money to live in the house. So the probability on using the income approach is zero. What are the odds that it's going to be a new build? Well, we know it's not because it's already there. So the odds of the cost approach are zero. That means the odds of the substitution is what? 100%. So literally, even though the appraiser is supposed to be doing all three of those, a smart appraiser in advance is going to go, no matter what value I get for cost, the probability is zero, therefore the answer is zero. No matter what number I get for income method, the probability is zero, therefore the total is zero. Literally, all they end up doing is the substitution method which will be 100% of the value. What does that look like? That is nothing more than the CMA that you and I did. When we listed the property, remember, we did the substitution method called the comps, and we gave a range, 147 to 151. Well, the appraiser should get the exact same numbers because he literally is only doing the exact same things we did. He's pulling the comps and using the substitution, and he is not accounting for the cost or the uh, income because the probability is zero. So 100% of his appraisal better be the same answer that we had when we listed it. And there's a lot of agents out there that go, I cannot believe that the appraiser got the actual number that, well, he should because he's doing the exact same things you did to get to that number to list it to begin with. All right. Once again, there is some math in there down here. Go check it out. You could actually go to chat GPT and ask for it. Hey, give me some math questions on using the gross rent multiplier. Give me some math questions using a cap rate and it will help you. Or you could email me, Raymond, at, what is it? Everybody say it, realuniversity.com, and we can do a little bit of math together. All right, I'll see you on the next chapter. Have a good day.